Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. And this time it's another review on a speed pedelec. It is on the Aska bike. And the Aska bike, it is quite a spectacular speed pedelec because like some other speed pedelecs, it has got suspension in the front. But the special one about this is that it has got suspension on the rear as well. And that is really what sets this speed pedelec apart from a lot of others. Do I have your attention? Enjoy the review. And welcome back to the review on the Aska bike. And as you can see by the looks of the bike, it seems to have a little bit more of off-road use up its sleeve. But if this is really the case, I will tell you later on. But before I start with the review itself, it might be polite to introduce myself to those of you who just tuned into my channel for the very first time. My name is Gijs. I am a Dutch outdoor gear and bike reviewer and I also sometimes review gadgets like for example a DJI Pocket P2 which is a really nice small gimbal camera or a DJI drone. Both of them, I use them a lot for my b-roll footage that you will also see in this video. Um, all links are below in the description to a lot of other stuff that I reviewed and that I use in this video. Now, um, I do my work totally independent, so that means that manufacturers are not paying me for my reviews. And if you like what I do at the end of this video, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you really like what I do, then please do a small donation on my Ko-fi account, link again in the description below, or just through the thanks button on my YouTube channel. Because with those small donations, I can buy sometimes some new equipment because sometimes I break things. Like for example, in this case, I broke a uh, GoPro 7, which is an old one, but I need to replace this. It just fell off the car that I was chasing to do some B-roll footage. Now, uh, let's start with the review itself. Let me start with telling you a little bit how I got this bike. Because it was the producer who basically saw my previous video on a speed pedelec, which is the Stromer ST3. Um, and he thought like, hey, this guy does a little bit different reviews than what we're used to. He is honest, he is open, sort of knowledgeable, uh, and he just tells what he thinks. He speaks his mind. So they gave me a call and they asked me if I wanted to test the Aska bike. And I asked them, is the Aska bike for sale in the whole of the world? Because I'm a YouTuber, I do it in English. Um, so people might want to buy the bike afterwards, seeing my review. And they said, no, it's produced in Belgium and it is for sale in Belgium. And at first I thought, no, I'm not going to go this way because if it's only for sale in Belgium, then it is maybe not that interesting to my channel. But then I thought, well, if it is only produced in Belgium or yet at the moment for sale in Belgium, it might be that after my review, it will go on sale everywhere if it is a decent bike. And since I had a good look at the specifications of the bike, well, basically it was my heart that said, yes, guys, you should do this review. Although it is only for a very small public maybe, but it is a very, very interesting bike. The Aska bike, like I said, it is made in Belgium. And you already heard what I said, Aska bike or Aska bike. Um, I've got some comments on posts that I did on YouTube and also on my Instagram account when I say Aska bike. And then because Aska, Aska is written with a A with a circle on top, um, I got some comments that it should be Oscar bike. But when I'm talking to the producer, they always talk about Aska bike. So I'm going to keep going on with the Aska bike because maybe that's just the Belgian way of saying that word. Oska, Aska, it means thunder in Swedish, by the way. Now, that was a little sideline uh, going back to the beginning. I think this is technically and design-wise a very interesting bike for me and also for my channel. So I just thought, well, you must be interested in something like this that looks that spectacular. Um, so I said, send them, send the bike to me and that's what they did. And I've been using it for about five weeks, did a lot of testing with it. Um, and basically this is the result, this video. Now the Esca bike itself, it is the idea of a Belgium guy called Philip 
Te Hing. And he thought, let's produce a speed pedelec in Belgium for the Belgian market that is also designed with mostly, not 100%, but mostly components from Belgium and Europe. And for example, what is interesting is that the frame itself, it is being made by a machine builder that does build uh, machines for the textile industry. And the cutting of the aluminium sheets, it's done there, it's folded there, and the whole frame, it is put together there. The company name of the frame manufacturer, by the way, is Gilbos, which is situated in Aalst, in, of course, Belgium. Now, if you look at the other components, uh, you will see that this is again a pinion bike. Well, pinion, it is made in Germany. Um, the front fork, it is a Formula One, just like the brakes. It is made in Italy. The rear suspension, it is from Eulins in Sweden. And the rear wheel engine, which is a Neo Drives, it is also produced in Germany. Now, the interesting part, of course, because you will see that in this beefy part there is of course the big battery and um, that one is also produced in Belgium by a company that uses the batteries or the cells from Samsung. So in that way it is not totally from Europe. In that battery by the way there are 21,700 Samsung cells and the company that does this manufacturing process it is Pulson. One of the things I will start with is, of course, the size and the weight. What is different to a, other, to a lot of other bike manufacturers is that the Asuka bike, it is only for sale in one size. And I did write an article, of course, also on my uh, website. So if you're looking for the full frame geometry specifications, then please hop over there uh, because that's where you will find basically everything because it was not when I did the review or when I was testing it was not on the website of Asuka itself and maybe they will change this. The other thing of course is the weight and that was not specified on the website either um, so I put it on my precise scale at home and I measured a weight of 37 kilos and 200 grams which is of course quite a lot but if you take into the account that this is a full suspension bike it's not that bad, to be honest. Um, later I got an email that also Asuka claims a weight of 37 kilograms. And that was that when they did not know what I weighed it. So it is quite spot on. Just one little remark on, again, on the frame size that it's only available in one size and one size fits all. Of course, this is not really the case, but I am one meter and 69 centimeters. I weigh 60 kilograms. And for me, this frame is absolutely fine. My wife, she's a little bit smaller. She was able to handle it. And I also asked a friend of mine who is one meter and 80 centimeters to ride the bike. And he also did not have any problems with the frame geometry and the size because of course the seat post can be adjusted as well as a little bit on the handlebar side. And now to give a good look on the bike itself, let me take off the panniers because when I test a speed pedelec, of course a speed pedelec is used for commuting most of the time, but when I test it, I also test it as a holiday bike. So I have got those panniers, these are Ortliebs by the way, uh, in the back and I test it with a small period of about 22 kilograms, which is a little bit much for me on my own. Um, so normally I test with about 15 kilograms of camping gear and the tent on the rear of the bike. Uh, and sometimes with other bikes, of course, you put panniers in the front, but that is not possible on this bike. So now let me take off the panniers and let's talk about the drive line. As you can see, the heart of the bike is a pinion transmission gearbox. And the frame, it is designed basically around this pinion gearbox. And if you don't know what a pinion gearbox is, it is basically honey, I shrunk my car gearbox a lot. Because this is just almost similar. It's two axles with a lot of sprockets on it. And in this case, it is a six speed. Pinion also does a nine speed. And if you want a nine speed, yes, Asuka bike can put that in this bike as well. And they also do a 12 and a 18 speed. Asuka made this bike 
not for mountainous areas. They made it for Belgium, for the lowlands, the flat countries, Flandria, uh, but also of course for the Netherlands. And that's why they put a six speed gearbox in, because this is enough if you are riding in flat countries with just small hills. The special thing about this pinion gearbox is, is the reach. And in this case, it has a reach of 295%. Now, what does this reach mean? Basically, it means that if you are cycling in, let's say, gear one, uh, when your pedals go really, really fast, that when you are riding against the wind, you can do this, or going up a hill. It is sort of easy. The sixth one, you're really cycling very slow, which is of course very nice if you want to keep a very long pace. But it also means that if you've got the wind in your back going slightly downhill, that you don't have to pedal like crazy. What I do like about this gearbox is that the steps between the one, two, three, four, five and six changes, it is a steady 24.3%. And this gives a really nice, well, biking feeling, to be honest. Because sometimes you've got these, especially with cassettes on the rear, that these steps are not totally logical or not linear. And in this case, it's absolutely linear, and that is what I love. What you should be aware of with the pinion is that when you shift between gears, that you need to take a little bit of pressure off the pedals, because then it's better for the changing of the gears itself and also of course for the durability and when you put full force on the pedals you can still well change but it does not really like it that's one of the downsides maybe of a pinion gearbox for the rest it is totally maintenance free and it is absolutely silent and bulletproof now to get the pedals going the gearbox going you will see that there is a gates belt drive system um, and a gates belt is just like the belt that you have in your car to drive the camshafts, or if you don't have a chain, of course. Um, it is really low in maintenance, it is absolutely quiet, and it drives, of course, the rear wheel sprocket. Here you will see a little wheel. This is a tensioner. There is a nice spring that puts the tension basically on this wheel. And if I press it a little bit, you see that it changes. Um, that is there to keep the correct pressure on the belt itself. What I do like about this way of construction of the frame is that the subframe, the rear subframe, um, it is made in a way that there is not a hole needed in the frame itself. When you have a belt failure and you need to replace a belt, then with most bikes you've got this triangular system and then you need to have a open piece, of course, with that is filled with another piece of metal, uh, but that you can bolt in and out so that you can put the belt around it onto the sprocket. In this case, it's just not necessary. Just take the rear wheel out and you can place the belt easily. Now, the other thing what is of course important is the motor. It is a rear wheel motor. Like I said, it is from Germany and it is a Neo Drives Z20RS. And it delivers 1200 watts peak and 40 Nm also in peak. Um, the motor itself, it weighs four kilograms. A rear wheel motor, that is also one of the reasons why Asuka says this is not a bike made for mountains, because in that way a mid-engine is better. Just because of when you're going uphill, a rear wheel motor needs to put a little bit more effort in pushing you basically uphill. Going downhill, it's of course different. The transmission, of course, gets its energy from what your legs are doing, just by putting pressure on the pedal. But the motor, of course, gets its energy from the battery that is inside here. And I'm very sorry, but I cannot show you the battery because there is a small lock on it. And when they delivered the bike to me, they lost the key. So I cannot take it out, but this battery, um, when you have it separate, it weighs five kilogram, and like I said before, it has 21,700 cells from Samsung in it. Um, All together, this is a, 90, uh, a 950 watt hour battery. And yes, on battery life, I will tell you a little bit more later. One thing that I'm almost forgetting, um, charging of the battery is done with a 4.5 amp adapter. 
Uh, and of course a wall socket and below the frame here you will find a nice rubber seal that covers basically where the plug of the adapter goes. And if you want to charge it um, from zero to 100%, I measured about five hours in my shed when it was 15 degrees of temperature. And when you want to charge it to about 80%, which is still enough, it will only take you about three and a half hours. So if you're in a jiffy, then that is absolutely nice. Again, on battery life, I will tell you later a bit more. So we've got a very powerful battery, we've got a rear wheel engine and what connects this all together is of course the E-System. And the E-System, it is basically in this little unit with a touch screen display. And as you can see, it's a twister thingy so I can take it off. So when I leave the bike somewhere, I can take this with me and then there's no purpose to steal the bike because it will not work. Um, it is a touchscreen, so there are three buttons that you can use when you are riding the bike. I want to have some different information. What I do love about this little screen is the fact that it is mounted well above the handlebar. So when I'm riding the bike, I can see the information very, very clearly. Um, and what supports this is the fact that you can tilt this screen very easily. So it does not really matter where the sun is or if there is a lot of white clouds above you. You can always tilt the screen in a way that the information stays visible. Now, to fire up the whole system, it's just a matter of pressing a very small button on this control unit on the left side of the handlebar. Pressing it shortly will fire up the system and start calibrating all the sensors. What you need to know is that if you are on the bike and you put one foot on a pedal, you put some pressure on the pedal and when you press it then, yes, the system will still fire up, but it will give you no support modes. This is also a safety feature. So when you want the support modes, and of course, that's what a speed, leg, a speed pedal like is for, you want them, then press the button without applying any pressure to the pedals. Now, on this control unit, um, on the top side there is the plus button and on the bottom side there is a minus button and this makes you shift through all the different support modes from one to five one being the least support doing most of it yourself and five giving maximum support on the left side next to the plus button there is a other small button that you can press but it does not do anything there is a light symbol there so i was expecting high or low beam but no it's not connected when they're on, they just blast full power. Um, and you cannot turn them off. And this is because of European law that says that on speed pedelecs, lights must always be on. On the lower side, next to the minus button, there is another small button. Both small buttons are pretty hard to use when having cold fingers or gloved up. Um, but this will basically scroll through the different menus in the display, which is now pretty hard to see with the light that uh, sunny and the camera being over there now but the whole system the plus and minus button they're very big absolutely very very useful use usable on the right side of the handlebar you will see this funny blue thing this is my quad lock mounting system for my iphone that i have the navigation on and here you will see the pinion um, shifter that uses that i use of course to shift between all the gears in the pinion gearbox um, most parts in the cockpit, the handlebar, um, the stem and also the grips and also the seat post, they are from Ergotech and I really like them. The grips, they give a nice amount of support. Uh, the handlebar, it is 700 millimeters wide, giving you a lot of control on um, dirt roads, for example. The position on the Asuka bike is very well chosen for a one-size-fits-all geometry. With my length of 1 meter 63, it is a nice balance between sportive and relaxed. Um, one thing that somebody you must like or you don't like, you love or hate it, um, it's the position of the mirror because it's mounted below uh, the handlebar. And what I've noticed a little bit depending on the body position, your riding position, you have perfect visibility on what's behind you or there is a part is covered just by one of your arms or by your left arm most of the time of course. Um, so in that way, yes, it absolutely functions but sometimes it can be a little bit blocked. What I did like is the fact that it is um, on most occasions 
100% vibration free. So it always gives a very clear image of what is behind you. Positioned just between the left side of the grip and this nice control unit for the support modes um, is a horn button. And yes, this is really an awful lot of noise. And again, if you're riding behind cyclists and you want to pass them and you press the horn, you scare the crap out of them. And again, just like I said with the Stromer e-bike, please make a horn that or sounds like a bell or maybe like a darker tone from, for example, a boat or a large truck, because that's just a little bit more friendly. This is just not a friendly sound. And sometimes when you're riding on a speed pedelec, you don't want anybody against you. And this is not helping. Now that I'm on this side of the bike anyway, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the suspension because this is a Formia Formula Selva S fork. And yes, this is a mountain bike fork, basically a downhill trail fork because originally it is designed to have a travel of 160 millimeters. And 160 millimeters, that is really serious stuff. Aska, they asked Formula to tweak it a little bit and it is limited now to 130 millimeters, which is still very, very good. Uh, of course, the fork, it is fully adjustable. Um, and then you have to take into account, of course, your body weight and how you would like the rebound to be. On the fork crown on this side there is also a lockout so if you don't want the suspension you can put it on lockout and then it will ride like a regular stiff fork and i've noticed that it is not a 100 percent lockout because small uneven road surface thingies will still be dampened or it might be just those big balloon tires uh, on the other side there is a screw cap and below that screw cap there is a valve and that's where you basically put the um, pump on to change the air pressure in the chamber to adjust the bike to your weight but also more on this later and of course below here there is this nice little red knob that you can turn and that is of course the rebound and that means how quickly Basically, the fork follows the unevenness of the road or of a field, for example. Like I said, the special thing about the Asuka bike is that it also has got a rear suspension. And it is a Erlins TTX1 Air, which also means that it is a air-supported shock. And also, this one is fully uh, adjustable. What is a little bit silly is that you will see that the shock it is built into the frame and this part of the frame one two three four eight together with the back side eight bolts that cover basically the shock and of course this is quite sensible because it will protect your shock for damage maybe from your feet maybe from other things it's not for the construction of the bike itself the big disadvantage is that you cannot get through that button when you are on the bike riding. So every time when you want to change basically that, that shock setup, you need to get off the bike, fiddle around a lot below it. Um, and if you want to change the pressure, because there is also a valve of course, then you will need to take the cover off. And also, if you want to adjust the rebound, you need to take the cover off. But once you set it up, um, basically you, you only do this once, unless when you go on a bike trip, when you have panniers, because then it is, of course, a little bit different. What I noticed when riding the bike at first in the factory setup was that the bike had a certain unrest in it. Riding without panniers, the stability was fine, but riding with the panniers and about 22 kilograms on the rear carrier, this changed dramatically. The bike felt wobbly and insecure in the straight line and taking corners or changing from one corner to the other, winding as roads, was not nice. Mostly the reason for this is an incorrect setup of the suspension and tire pressure and of course a lot of weight on the rear of the bike. With a full suspension bike, it is important to set everything to the rider's weight. That means setting the correct air pressure first. 
Aska advises to add 20 kg to the suggested weight of formula. I am 63 kg, so with 20 kg extra I adjust the pressure in the floor to 85 psi. After that it is important to set the rebound too and that is just a lot of experimenting to get it to your personal liking. Setting the shock is almost the same procedure as the fork except for the extra weight. I adjusted the pressure to 220 psi. The pressure in the big balloon tires is one of those things that does a lot for the handling of the bike too. Aska advises a pressure of 2.2 bar. After a lot of experimenting I found that for the front tire this 2.2 bar works fine, but I need it a bit more in the rear tire. I found the sweet spot at 2.5 bar. After adjusting the pressure in the fork, the rear shock and the tires, the wobbly issue was almost over. There was one thing that I needed to do to get it right. Position the saddle one centimeter closer to the handlebar. With this all done, riding the bike is absolutely a joy. When you look at the bike, you will probably see that this bike is a 29er. And the rims are from Rodi and they are the Trip 35 type and that means 35 millimeters wide and they are double walled and of course made out of aluminum the tires yes they are really big balloon tires and they are Schwalbe hurricanes and the size of course 29 by 2.4 which is really absolutely wide because of these balloon tires even when you're riding a full lookout these will give you a lot of comfort when you're riding on tarmac but still got some uneven humps and bumps sometimes. What I do like about these tires is that in the middle of the tire there is a very small profile so giving less roll resistance. When you're going a little bit more to the sides you will see a sort of very small profile that means that you will still get a lot of grip when the road is dirty or even wet. Now on the side you will see really big knobs that means when you're riding a dirt track with a lot of sand or mud that you will still get a lot of traction and especially Especially from the rear and this is something that I've noticed and also when I've been going down a mountain bike trail with a lot of very loose sand I've noticed that when going into a corner these grips on the side these knobs on the sides they really provide a lot of grip so yes I really like those Spalbe hurricanes turning to the back of the bike of course that is the same rim and the same tire and above that tire there is the rear fender and the rear carrier and after riding a dirt road I suddenly heard a noise a rubbing noise and when I stopped I noticed that the rear carrier together with the fender were bent over to the left side and the main reason appeared to be that I lost a bolt that connects one of the feet of that rear carrier to that big aluminum part that connects the axle to the subframe Next to that, I also noticed that the fender and the rear tire don't have much space. So when riding on a dirt road, that space gets clogged up with dirt quite soon and then you've got an awful lot of noise. And that is something that you don't want on an otherwise very quiet bike. So that's when Aska needs to make improvements. As you can see, I changed the bike the other way around because on this side is where the brakes are visible. And brakes, of course, they are very important on a speed pedelec. And uh, Aska bike made a really surprising choice, to my opinion. Because the brakes, yes, they are from Formula, the Italian brand, just like the front fork. And it is the Cura 4 series. So that means that both calipers in the front and in the rear they have four pistons and four pistons brake calipers they always provide a lot of stopping power of course in relation to the disc that you use and in this case Aska mounted a 180 millimeter disc in the front and in the rear they mounted a 203 millimeter disc most of the time the disc sizes are the same from front and rear or they use a smaller disc on the rear. So in this way this choice has been quite surprising to me. But it is actually quite 
well, sensible to put a smaller disc in the front. Because of this stopping power that is way sufficient, um, the front brake never has the tendency to block, which is of course good for the safety. Now, if we talk about the rear brake, it's also a four piston caliper with a 203 millimeter disc. There is a lot of stopping power in that disc. So when you are riding on wet roads or on dirt tracks, uh, just a little bit of pressure from the brake lever is needed to block that rear wheel. Formula disc brakes and also formula levers. Um, and what I do like about these levers is the fact that they fit two or three fingers really, really nicely, but that they are also suitable or adaptable to small and big hands. Because there is a little screw that you can turn and then the lever basically goes away from the handlebar or gets closer to the handlebar. One thing that you should know is that this is not possible just with your fingers because the knob is too small and the resistance is too high. You will need a hex key for this. And be aware that on a lot of bike tools, the bike tool is just too big and it will not fit in between so you can turn it. So what you do need is a special bike tool or you just bring a separate hex tool on your trip. One thing that really sets the looks of the Asuka bike apart from a lot of different bike, other bikes is of course the looks of the light unit. It really looks like it's from a stealth bomber or stealth fighter from the US of A. Um, the housing itself, it is partly aluminum and also part plastic. And if you loosen a few screws, then basically you can tilt the whole unit in whole, so you can have the light shining a little bit more in front of you or just a little bit further away. The headlamps themselves, they are from Busch und Müller and they are from the IQX series. They provide 150 lumens each and when riding at night, well, I've got a bit of road that is visible up to about 50 meters and also the beam pattern, it is really nicely centered and widens out very, very gently. And you probably hear the sheep, they're going absolutely crazy over there. Now on the rear, it is a bit less interesting because it is also a rear light from Bosch & Müller with a red light, of course, a brake light and a integrated uh, white light to lighten up the license plate. I promised to get back to the battery life of that big 950 watt hour battery with those 21,700 Samsung cells. I did a lot of testing with this bike and I tried to empty the battery as fast as I, pos as, as I could and of course I tried to prolong my ride as long as I could. When in support mode 5 doing 45 kilometers an hour I can drain the battery in about 43 kilometers. So if you use this bike for commuting and you don't want to charge it in between when you're at work, then the distance should be about 20 kilometers to your work and back home again. Now, when I'm doing a more relaxed tour with my panniers, like on holiday, uh, in support mode two, three, and sometimes four, when I'm going uphill or when the wind is blowing hard in my face um, and doing about 34 kilometers an hour, I get a reach of 85 kilometers, which I think is pretty decent. If you do it mostly by giving support from your legs to the engine and to the battery in support mode one and sometimes two doing 25 kilometers an hour, which is still absolutely acceptable when you're doing longer tours for your traveling, um, then you get about a reach of 110 kilometers. And I think with these three scenarios, uh, the battery life of the Asuka bike is absolutely fine. And now, finally, it is time to head on to my verdict. How do I rate the Asuka bike? Um, to be honest, if you would have asked me a couple of years ago if I would like to review a full suspension speed pedelec that does 45 kilometers an hour on dirt tracks and has a weight of 37 kilograms, I would have said no. 
probably because in general I don't like trekking or travel bikes with suspension. The Aska bike changed this completely because there is not much that I don't like about this bike. In the first place I do like the geometry and the riding position because it is a very sweet balance between a bit sportive but also relaxed. If you're doing longer days in a saddle it is not a problem. But I also love the components that Asuka uses. In the first place, of course, this Pinion C1.6 six-speed gearbox that is absolutely silky. Um, I like the NeoDrive engine and, of course, this Gates carbon drive between them because it is a very nice, maintenance-free, but above all, a very silent system. One thing that I'm positively surprised about is the fact that they put a small disc in the front and a big disc in the rear. Yes, and in the front it works absolutely fine because of this smaller size and four calibers. You still got a lot of braking power, but it is very hard to block the front wheel. And that is of course safe. Uh, on the rear, well, in my opinion, they could have done with a smaller disc because if you're riding on a dirt road and you want to use your rear brake, it has the tendency to block up the rear wheel pretty, pretty fast, unless when you've got a lot of weight on your panniers. But the best thing about the Asuka bike is of course the suspension. Um, I love the Formula Eulins combination because if you put the suspension basically in its firmest position, then the Aska bike on tarmac rides like a very comfortable normal speed pedelec. Just with a little bit more comfort because of the not 100% lockout of the suspension. Now if you're going on to gravel roads, dirt tracks, even big potholes and yes the mountain bike trails that I tried this bike on and you open the suspension fully it is still a very comfortable bike and it is very very capable but it is not all positive because what i don't like is the fact that of course that rear suspension is hidden under a cover and that i cannot adjust anything when i'm riding the bike and the other thing that i absolutely don't like and what they need to improve is basically the construction of the rear carrier because it is just not stable enough and that said, also the distance between the fender and this big tire, it is just too small. When you go through mud, um, it really clogs up very, very fast and then your bike is not as silent anymore as it should be. Last but not least, let's talk a bit about the price. Well, there's not much to talk about because the Asuka bike price starts at 9,599 euros. That is without the rear carrier. If you want that one, you will have to pay 199 euros extra, making this bike 9,798 euros. And yes, that's a lot of money to spend on a bike that still has got a few flaws. The flaw that I can forgive Asuka is basically the stupidness of the cover, uh, covering the adjustment knob lever of the suspension, because basically I want to get to that knob when I'm riding the bike and want to change something. The thing that I can't forgive is basically the rear carrier that is not stable enough, it's not good enough connected to the frame and also the, the gap between the rear tire and the fender. That really should be improved before I spend my money on this bike. But there's one thing that I really do like about the Asuka bike and that is the fact that it is made in Belgium or maybe I should say assembled in Belgium from mainly European parts. And that is a big bonus to me. And therefore I rate the Aska bike at 8.9 points out of 10 total. Now I really hope you liked this review and if you did then please give the video a like and also hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Because with more of you I can make more videos and I can even earn some sort of YouTube money. Now, thank you so much in advance if you do. And if you really want to support me, like I said in the beginning, please hit the thanks button uh, or do a small donation on my 
GoFi account. I'm almost ashamed to ask this, but during this shoot, I crashed my GoPro and I need to replace it. And yes, I can pay a lot out of my own pocket, but sometimes a little help is much appreciated. If you want to see more videos, then please continue watching. Uh, in the description below, there are many, many playlists on bikes, tents, boots, stoves, and everything that I use in my outdoor life. And also, of course, on some stuff that I use to shoot these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. And yes, I am really looking forward going through this field with this bike again. Bye.